The sound of silence. So deafening at times, one might question what fills the evening sky. As the sun dips past the mountains and kisses the desert floor, we're left with colorful remains of the day and the first twinkle of starlight. And as dusk creeps in beyond the shadows and the moon is met with darkness, the seemingly silent space above is no longer quiet. Listen, what you're hearing is a sky alive with bats. Bats represent about 20% of all mammals on the planet. They're the second largest group of mammals in the world and the only ones capable of flight. These tiny flying creatures are not only fascinating, they're a vital part of a healthy ecosystem. And here in the desert, they are everywhere. I was seeing that there's a lot of stuff going on out here after hours. It's a big party in the desert once that sun goes down. Eager to join the fabulous flyer party, we teamed up with BLM wildlife biologist Danielle Ortiz to go batting. She's been studying bats for years, particularly the species which populate our desert skies. So what we've got going on right now is we've got bats are, are echolocating the chattering. And then we're doing a little fun social called chatter. So that was another good pulse, a lot of calls going on there. Bats echolocate at a range that people can't hear. Ortiz uses a bat detector to translate their calls into a sonogram, which creates a unique call signature for each species and can tell you exactly what kind of bat is flying overhead. What's great about bats is you can go anywhere in the valley, anywhere in the world, and you're going to find bats. They're on every continent except Antarctica. So here in the valley, I mean, this is a gold mine, as I said, for bats, 19 species out of the 20. The Coachella Valley is a mecca for bats, mostly because of the habitat diversity. Some of the residents include little pipistrelles known as canyon bats that live in rock crevices, yellow bats, which love to snooze in palm tree skirts, and red bats that hide in cottonwoods. Western mastiff bats reside in the rocks. Then there are Townsend bats with giant ears, the California leaf-nosed bat, the pallid bat, which eats scorpions, and the Mexican free-tailed bats. On one of our bat monitoring missions, we discovered a huge colony of pups roosted in a nearby cave. Mexican free-tailed bats nurse their young in huge colonies and often carry pups with them on their nightly bug hunts. Bats are amazing, definitely a species we probably take for granted more often than we should. Lucky us, these tiny furry critters make giant impacts on the environment. They're essential in keeping insect populations in balance worldwide and are credited with both reducing the need for pesticides and bug-related crop damage, in turn saving farmers billions of dollars a year. They assist in pollination of flowers and trees. And now, because of their unique physiology, they're being studied for medical advances too. Ortiz says, for all the good they spread, they're often misunderstood. For instance, bats are not blind. They have an extra superpower in echolocation, meaning they can also see in sound. So if you think of bats flying in your hair or have heard that as well, that's another one that's false. So they don't fly into the hair. Um, they know that you're there. They can see you perfectly well. You probably have a bug by your head. She should be happy the bat's coming by you because it's probably picking off a bug that may be a mosquito or something that's not gonna be nice to you. So they're doing you again another good service by helping you out there because they're hungry. Ortiz wrote her grad school thesis on the Western yellow bat, the only bat listed in the 27 species under the Coachella Valley Multiple Species Habitat Conservation Plan. Its habitat, palm tree skirts, and sadly, not much was known about these little guys until Ortiz began her graduate work. She's hopeful that through her interest and effort, bats, and this species in particular, will not only survive, but thrive. I have a passion with, with all species of wildlife, and I've always liked underdogs, and I always felt like bats were a true underdog. People think all these bad things about them, they're hard to study. Sadly, bats are quite vulnerable to extinction. They're the slowest reproducing mammals on Earth for their size. Most produce only one pup per year. 
that coupled with persecution by humans, disturbance of roosting caves, and loss of habitat are continual threats to these fearless and beneficial flyers. And that is why Ortiz's mission continues. I think one of the major things with any species, and bats included, is uh, education. I think that's the real thing to get people invested, care about that resource, that, that species. Because um, when you get people behind you, that's where you're going to get more support for doing better stuff on the ground, protecting them. Thank you so much for watching Wanderlust. Don't forget to like and subscribe to see where we wander next.